welcome to Spanish Town Heritage Foundation's production of Lorenzo y sus tres amigos, Lorenzo and his three friends. I'm Nancy Melendez and I'm the president of Spanish Town Heritage Foundation and I'm a sixth generation descendant of Lorenzo Trujillo. Our mission at the foundation is to share the Inland Empire's earliest Hispanic and Latino settlers stories. And today we're standing in front of a photo of the Trujillo adobe built in 1862. This adobe was originally built in 1842, but washed away by the flood of 1862. You see standing in front of the porch of the adobe, some Trujillo family members posing for a picture in 1909. This 1862 building still stands today and is a California site of significance, a Riverside city and county landmark. This is our Old West history, and we want to share with you today a story about Lorenzo Trujillo. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with Rubido, California, Mount Wilson in Los Angeles, and maybe even Bandini Avenue in Riverside. These places and names are named after Lorenzo's friends, Juan Bandini, Louis Rubido, and Benjamin Wilson, otherwise known as Benito Wilson. Where are the schools and names and places named after Lorenzo? After all, these four gentlemen were contemporaries right here in our own backyard. What role did Lorenzo play in forming La Placita de los Trujillos and Aguamanza in 1843? He didn't do it alone. He did it with Juan Bandini, Louis Rubido, and Benjamin Wilson. This beautiful landscape, now known as Pelissier Ranch, was the site of the largest non-native community along the Old Spanish Trail from Abiquiu, New Mexico to Los Angeles in the 1840s. It was named La Placita de los Trujillos Aguamanza, meaning the village of the Trujillos or gentle waters. At this time, the entire Southwest except Texas was Mexico. In our region, the now Inland Empire was part of Alta California, Mexico. Just imagine a village of 85 adobes built around a small plaza with a multi-purpose altar in the center. The altar sometimes used for school and at other times used for church services. All surrounded by the hills, the Santa Ana River, and endless acres of grazing land. This was La Placita de los Trujillos in Aguamanza in this very spot. Lorenzo was a second-generation Native American member of the Trujillo household in Abiquiu, New Mexico. It is unknown how his father came to the household. Was he captured? Was he kidnapped? Or was he purchased as a slave? Historical records are unclear. There are no known images of Lorenzo. He is described as a man of great faith, great loyalty, a family man, and a community builder. He is buried at Aguamanza Pioneer Cemetery and the sculpture, this sculpture marks his grave. Lorenzo married Maria Dolores Archuleta and had seven children, four sons and three daughters. Lorenzo's daughter, Gertrudis, is my third great-grandmother. Like any family of today, they longed for a home and land of their own. But after almost 300 years of Spanish occupation, there was literally no land left to grant in New Mexico and no land for Lorenzo and his family to own. Lorenzo, as a Native American raised in Spanish culture and tradition, was a well-regarded scout and found employment as such along the Old Spanish Trail trade route, ultimately guiding his family, as well as many other families across the trail, to create and establish the community of La Placita de los Trujillos Aguamanza. Lorenzo was the community leader, the unofficial alcalde, or the mayor. Under his leadership, the community built the area's first irrigation canals to water the fields and livestock, built the first church called San Salvador de Jarupa, and the first school, the Trujillo School. Lorenzo died in 1855 and is buried at the Aguamanza Pioneer Cemetery, created by the community just a year earlier in 1854. Lorenzo was a contemporary of Juan Bandini, Louis Rubido, and Benjamin Wilson. It seems that Santa Fe, New Mexico is the connection for three of these gentlemen along with business, trade, and the longing for adventure, a new life, and land ownership. But how did they get here to the Inland Empire? The Old Spanish Trail began where the Santa Fe Trail ended in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The Old Spanish Trail is actually an old Native American trail used for centuries. 
the Spanish colonials used the trail and claimed it as their own. The trail was a conduit that connected eastern Mexico, New Mexico, to western Mexico, Alta California, wandering through what we now know as New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, and finally California. Trade along this route were blankets and baskets for California horses and furs to sell. Abiquiu is next to Santa Fe, and the Trujillo family was likely well-connected in Santa Fe society in the late 1820s and 1830s. The Bandini family came to Alta California in 1819, not on the old Spanish trail, but via a sailing ship. Jose Bandini, Juan's father, was a sea captain and part of Spain's vice royalty in Peru. From Lima, Peru, the family sailed to San Diego, Alta California. Juan Bandini married Maria de los Dolores Estudillo in 1822 and had three sons and two daughters. He then built Casa de Bandini in 1829, which still stands today in Old Town San Diego as the first floor of the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Bandini was granted Rancho Tecate in 1826 by the Mexican government. This was one of the most remote ranchos east of San Diego between Sonora, Baja California, and the Colorado River. The ongoing dispute of land ownership between the Spanish and Native Americans in Alta California ended with Bandini abandoning Rancho Tecate when his home was burned and his livestock stolen during a battle with the Kumaye tribe, successfully reclaiming their land. Juan much preferred a city lifestyle than a rancho lifestyle. Listen to Richard Henry Dana Jr.'s description of him in Two Years Before the Mast. Quote, he had a slight and elegant figure, moved gracefully, danced and waltzed beautifully, spoke the best of Castilian with a pleasant and refined voice and accent, and had throughout the bearing of a man of high birth and figure. End quote. He served as a member of the Alta California Assembly, a substitute congressman after the Mexican-American War, and as Justice of the Peace in 1848 San Diego. He was known as Don Juan Bandini, and it was said that his lifestyle and hospitality often got him into trouble financially, requiring his family and friends to bail him out. In 1838, the Mexican government once again granted Bandini a tract of land named Rancho Jurupa. This is today's western portion of Riverside and San Bernardino counties. He stays in San Diego, and there is no indication that he does anything but own this tract of land. In 1842, Bandini sells a key portion of Rancho Harupa to Louis Rubido, a section that today encompasses Rubido, now Harupa Valley, and a significant portion of now downtown Riverside, and he sold it due to financial difficulties. Remembering the loss of Rancho Tecate due to his inability to defend it, and likely at the urging of his friend, Louis Rubido and or Benjamin Wilson, Bandini donates a small portion of Rancho Harupa to Lorenzo Trujillo in 1843 with the stipulation that Lorenzo will defend Rancho Harupa from livestock raiders. This gift of land to Lorenzo and the New Mexican pioneers is called the Bandini Donation. Louis Rubido was born to French-Canadian parents in St. Louis, Missouri in 1796. He and his brother Antoine were fur trappers and traders, and later Louis became a rancher. Rubido moved to Santa Fe, New Mexico in the late 1820s and became a Mexican citizen in 1829. He married Guadalupe de Garcia y Noriega in 1834 in Santa Fe and had nine children. In later years, Rubido's daughter, Benigna, married Lorenzo's son, Juan Trujillo, creating a Rubido-Trujillo family connection. New Mexico was the center of trade in the 1830s. It connected the Santa Fe Trail from Missouri to Santa Fe and the Old Spanish Trail from Santa Fe or Abiquiu to California. A renowned fur trader and businessman, Rubido made many trips across the Old Spanish Trail in the 1830s using Lorenzo Trujillo as his scout or guide. In 1839, Rubido became mayor of Santa Fe. Political unrest at this time in New Mexico likely confirmed his decision to move west. Louis Rubido purchased a portion of Rancho Harupa from Juan Bandini in 1849, who, as we've heard already, was prone to having financial difficulties, and indeed he did. 
Benjamin Davis Wilson, later known as Benito Wilson, was a fur trapper and trader from Tennessee. He made his way across the United States to New Mexico to join the Roland Workman Party's journey along the Old Spanish Trail to Los Angeles in 1841. His ultimate destination was China. Unable to gain passage to China, he decided to stay in California. He purchased a portion of Rancho Harupa from Juan Bandini in 1842. Wilson had met Lorenzo as the scout and guide of the Roland Workman Party on their journey to Los Angeles in 1841. Rancho San Bernardino and Rancho Hurupa were next to one another. Lorenzo and Wilson, being rancho neighbors, band together to protect their livestock and crops from raiders. It is said that in one of these defensive battles far from the ranchos that Wilson was snake bit and the quick actions of Lorenzo in sucking the venom out of the wound saved Wilson's life. This was the beginning of a long-lasting friendship between the two men. Wilson later married into the Yorba family, thus giving him naturalized Mexican citizenship status and access to land ownership. He became the first non-Mexican to own Rancho San Pascual, which is today's Pasadena, Altadena, South Pasadena, Alhambra, San Marino, and San Gabriel. He was the second mayor of Los Angeles after the Mexican-American War, serving from 1851 to 1852. That brings us back here to the Trujillo adobe and to Lorenzo, born Juan Manuel Lorenzo Trujillo in Abiquiu, New Mexico in 1796. He was a scout, a trader, a farmer, and a community builder. His friendships and relationships with Don Juan Bandini, Luis Rubido, and Benito Wilson were the foundation for the establishment of La Placita de los Trujillos Aguamanza, now known as the north side of Riverside and the city of Colton. The, the three friends' relationships did become strained when Bandini's son-in-law, Abel Stearns, tried to reclaim the Bandini donation in 1851 because, as you might have guessed, Bandini was having financial difficulties. Louis Rubido represented Stearns in the lawsuit. The arbiter of the suit, however, turned out to be Mayor Benito Wilson of Los Angeles, who upheld the, the legality of the Bandini donation, stating that Lorenzo had met the grant stipulation to defend Rancho Hurupa. Benito Wilson had personal knowledge of Lorenzo's bravery and heroism while defending Rancho Hurupa. This is the history of our area prior to and after statehood in 1850. This is a story of the Old West in the Inland Empire and it does indeed show the integral role Lorenzo Trujillo played in the formation of Riverside as we know it today. For more information, please go to www.spanishtownhf.org, www.savetrujilloadobe.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Spanish Town Heritage Foundation and Save Trujillo Adobe. You can find us on YouTube, Spanish Town Heritage Foundation. I highly recommend that you read Defending Eden by Joyce Vickery and that you browse through the JSTOR collection of the Southern California Quarterly. Or please contact us at info at SpanishTownHF.org. We hope that you've enjoyed this look into Lorenzo Trujillo and the three amigos in the settling of the Old West. <music>